Hi everyone, welcome. It's Ryan here from the London Craftsman channel. For the past, I can't remember how long, six, eight, ten weeks, I've been doing site fitting videos, spray room videos, a couple of making videos, but I've not talked about tools, hand tools or anything like that. So I thought I'd use today to actually do a video on hand tools in particular. I'm going to be showing you um, a few of my favorites that we use around the workshop. Remember, my favorites are not only me thinking it's a great tool, it's an amazing tool. For me, it's about value for money also and the quality of the tool. So I think personally, value for money has probably about 50% towards the actual overall of the tool, in my personal opinion, okay? So I'm going to describe this to you. Say, for example, you go to Woodpeckers, you buy a square, okay? and it costs you 120 pounds it's aluminium it's great it's lovely but you can buy the same tool exactly the same i mean like for like the quality and everything for 30 pounds um what are you most likely going to be happy with what what are you most likely going to enjoy more using yep we all know we like a freebie we like something cheap and if it is exactly the same quality as something expensive, then you feel like you've got a bargain. Hence the reason I like to have a tool that's good value for money. So the tools I'm showing you today are mainly aluminium. They are tools that we use around the workshop all the time and they save us time and money in the, in the long run, but they are fantastic quality. So I want to share them with you because you may not know about them, but I thought I'd give a few of them a shout out once more and just um, consolidate them into one little video right now just to show you um, a little bit about them. It's not a review, it's just showing you the tool and um, a little bit of information. So in no particular order, what I will do is pull up um, the Vico hinge jig okay so there are lots of hinge jigs on the market okay from trend to vestal to a million different other brands you can buy plastic ones you can buy metal ones this one for me is great okay it's aluminium it's lightweight it comes with a toggle clamp and the ease of use is what it's all about so you can just simply clip that on okay it's already been adjusted like so and just pull that lever down and it's done. Simple and easy. So if you've got a big door that's resting on the workbench, you just clip that on. You then get the other piece that locks in, okay? So here it is. It does come with a cutter as well. It looks a bit worse for wear this one. It's just cut a hinge. But it's this plate that sits within your jig, okay? Like so. And then you can drill away. It comes with a little stopper so you know how deep you want to drill. And then once you have done that, before you unclip it, you put this plate in, clip that in, and then you've got your pre-drills. So this has got two different spacings for different style hinges. Yeah, you can do a variety of hinges. Plus on this actual clamp as well, if I, if I take it off, you will see little pins here, okay, two. And what that allows you to do is give you different gaps or before the hole starts on the actual door, generally I do about three mil. You can increase that or decrease it. I think it's anywhere from, let's have a look, three mil, four mil, five mil, or six mil, um, the margin from the edge of the door to the start of the hole. So I think that's great. And the value for money on this is fantastic too. Remember everything that I'm gonna be showing you right now is going to be in the video description so you can just have a little look. Adjust this toggle to whatever door thickness that you've got. I've got it set to an 18 and there's still a good 18 mil left of thread left. So I'm sure you can clamp it onto anything up to, I don't know, 30 or 40 mil, but you're not gonna need that, 18, 22 maximum. And just think it's fantastic value for money. It's aluminum, it's lightweight and we've been using this for a couple of years non-stop it drills out hundreds and hundreds it's quick i think it's the quickest jig around okay just because it's got the one click motion and you can take this in take this out it's done it's quick and it's easy all right so that's the vico jig which i really really love so let's move on to another one again in no particular order 
I'm just going to randomly pick these. I will go for a little one. All right. So I love this because it's small. It's diddy. It does one or two just particular jobs. Uh, makes life easy. It's lightweight and it's cheap. It's a mini kind of square. So if you are needing to mark just a couple of parallel lines, for example, you've got some pre-drills going in the edge of a wardrobe to you know, drill out your fixing points, um, or you are manually drilling out your hinges for some reason, or the plates, for example, you want to drill out your plates that's close to the edge. This does up to 65 millimeters, okay? And it's just so lightweight, it fits in your little pocket, like so, and you just pick it up, and you can just get your pencil in there and just strike your lines, really cheap and effective. And it's in that nice red color that Vico does on all their tools. Let's move on to another one. I'm gonna go with the Hongdui um, round over plane or the chamfer plane. It's got little blades that stick out that you can wind in and out that stick out the bottom here, okay? It's got these little wheels that allow you to adjust them in and out on both. It's got a little dial here which will just lock the wheels into position. And I think it's really, really well made. It's, it's nice heavy weight to it. Um, it does copy um, another type, okay, another brand, and it's exactly the same. But on this one, it has two. It's got the rounded blade and it's got the flat blade. So one's going to give you a chamfer and one is going to give you kind of like a round over. And we do lots of roundovers on our work. So every component that we make, literally everything that we touch is handmade. We cut it by hand. It's either MDF, birch ply or a veneered MDF. We don't touch anything else. But we like to put a little 1.6 millimeter radius, um, radius on our components. So if this was a finished component, it would be done on all four long edges and across the top. And then that will just give you the perfect round on every single component all the same back in the day i used to do it with the p120 and p240 and yeah they looked okay it was a lot of work you can get splinters from the birch ply you can rip up a little bit of grain doing it that way and some of them were inconsistent the thing about this is you get consistent joints and the reason consistent joints is good is because if you are putting one piece up against another piece um this is the way I like to do it on my wardrobes. I don't have a sharp edge. I make a detail of that joint. Okay. So imagine that's a side up against your backing. Okay. I would like a 1.6 mil radius on that piece. So when it hits the back in, it'll be a consistent, nice black line. Because if you don't, it will look like a gap or it'll look tight. It's inconsistent. So by having a round over or the chamfer, well, the round over on this occasion, it just gives you a consistent, nice round over on all your arises same on every single component plus it's quick and it's easy and um yeah you can do it with a trimmer so i've got this over here we do use the 1.6 millimeter radius cutter i'll leave a link for this cutter as well this is from trends this this particular one and this is a certain size so have a look a look for the link for this it's so tiny and you feel like you're not really doing much when you're out but again it's that it's not too big, it's not too small, the roundovers on both of these, to be honest, that one and that one, they are the same. It's going to give you nice, consistent um, arises on all of them, quick and easy, um, no fuss. Yeah, I love that just because it's, this, this, to be honest, is perfect more for like ply and hardwoods. Again, Sean and I both use it on all materials and it works on all. Um, but yeah, the Hongdui chamfer roundover plane. So... Moving on to number four, um, I'm going to go on to, right, can you guess it, anyone? This, it's a track saw square. Okay, so obviously your track will go into this. Let's see if I can get a track and show you. So basically, this is the way it works. I've got little 800 track, by the way. So they're really, really handy. Um, so what I've basically done is I got a three meter track from Makita because we like to just do our long rips on, on cheap material. Three meter just makes life so much easier. We had an old 1.4 or 1.6 and we cut it in half and we were left with two 800s. Yeah, 1.6. Um, if that is 800. Anyway, it's small. Um, we've taken one of these on site 
and we've left one here. So if we're just doing little cross cuts on something small, then this is great. So three meter, 1.4 and a one and a 700 or an 800. Anyway, you, you get the drift. I can't remember what that track was that I cut up to start with. But here we go. We've got the track source square. So if we just want to do 90 degree cuts on our material and we don't want to put a square on it, a strike our line, put a track on it. And then there's a bit of debate on whether it's going to be perfect or not. Then a track source square is what you need. It's, it's, it's repeatability. It's over and over again. And as you can see, it's really easy to use. This one in particular is adjustable. And that is the fancy part about this. It's fantastic. It's heavy. This one, I think heavy is quite nice because it just feels like it's just going to hold itself in place. It just slides on. Um, I'm not 100% sure on what brand tracks this will use, um, will fit with, but I think it's at least Festool and Makita. You'll have to have a look on the, um, the website, slide it down, put that clip into position, clip it down. There we go. This came calibrated, so it was perfect for me, but if you need to um, release or, or just adjust it very slightly, what you do is you put your track onto the piece you then release these two grubs and just let that plate move ever so slightly strike a line on your work make sure it's square in position like push it up against your square line and just make sure this tab is in on the zero because it locates on these tiny little notches that do five degree increments and then that just sits in and then you can tighten these back up and that will just zero it again for you but it's quick and easy you just put your square track or square like that it's got a tab here yeah albeit i'm using a small track so it's quite heavy it's going to lean down okay so you know for me that doesn't really matter i'm going to just get my saw on there right now for example let's get the saw if i was to cut something i get my saw on there push it with my left hand track in place saw in place and just go for it go for the cut but it's got the tab here, so if the track was longer, it would balance itself. It just means that it's not going to do this, because a lot of tracks do this. Okay, so the tab here allows for that, which is great. It holds itself in place. Again, I'm using a small track. If I had the 1.4, then it wouldn't pivot. But it's adjustable, and I think that is the selling point. And this, if you bought this in Woodpeckers, I don't even want to tell you how much it is. Um, have a look at this video that I've made. A year or so ago just um, comparing prices because it's ridiculous the difference so this is a copy of the woodpeckers yeah it's a debate whether you like it or you don't like it as in copies um, yeah everyone does it even car brands everyone does it but it's so cheap and this is a fantastic piece of quality tool you will not go wrong okay I love this thing to bits moving on to the last one okay and I don't know if you're going to guess it, but what we do here is cutting, okay? This one here needs its teammate, okay? So this is to do the cross cuts. We want something to do the rips. And to do repeatability of rips of sheet material over and over again, including thin rips, you're going to need a set of parallel guides. And these, these are amazing. When you buy them, you will know the quality, you take them out of the box and you just feel the quality. Everything is perfect from the way all the millimeters line up in all the sections because it comes in, um, you get eight of these um, 300 mil long sections. You get these lovely um, stoppers which have a nice feel to them. They've got a bit of resistance so they don't flop. They go onto your track saw nicely. Everything about them is fantastic. Um, let me bring out a few of the other parts that you do get also so you get eight of the sections so you can make them up to 1.2 on each side which means you can cut off a full 1.2 meter sheet and they come with the little tabs like that and they simply just clip in and then you just nip up the grub screw at the back and they give you a really really nice tight joint okay they're numbered as well and if we look down here, we've got the stoppers. Okay, so what these do is allow you to do a little bit of trickery on doing thin rips. So if you need to rip a small piece, for example, 50 mil off a board, 
then doing it over and over again is, you know, it's near enough impossible without these thin rip stops. And these act as little stoppers, they slide underneath. So they will slide underneath your track and hit up against your workpiece to, to give you the stop and to give you that parallel cut over and over. Because remember, these are for repeatability. They put them on, you, you cut, you put them on, you cut, and it will just give you that 50, 60, 70, 100 mil rip every single time. And that's what these two do. If you want to see a video of me calibrating these, I've got them either have a look for Banggood tools, parallel guides, and you will see them, or hopefully I'll put a little link up the top. But value for money, these, these are ridiculous. They are still absolutely cheap as chips. They come from across the world and they are still cheaper than if I bought something from America. Remember, America would just get the import charges all the time. Quality and the value for money is outstanding. To be honest, they are on all of them, okay? Hence the reason I've picked these all up. I should really do a video on every bit of aluminium. I've got all the aluminium tools because I've probably got about 30 or 40 squares and protractors and all sorts of jigs um, lying around, but they're all in boxes. Till I figure out my workbench and I kind of neaten things up and I make myself a French cleat wall on the back to put them on. They're living in boxes at the moment. I do have one more thing to show you. I thought I'd give you like a bonus tool as such as they all do because I did have it in the drawer and I pulled it out and I was like, oh, I love this thing so much. It comes in all different sizes. It comes in 100, 2, 3, 4, 500, 600 mil. And it is a T square. Okay. Light as a feather, lovely to touch, the quality and the craftsmanship, the CNC work um, to route to, to machine this is fantastic. As you can see, it says the 600. I've got every size of this and it's a fabulous piece of work. It's got the little holes where you put the pencil in and you can just mark a parallel line across any workpiece. And this gets used all the time. Um, again, it's value for money, but... Don't they just look really nice? The red, the powder coating or whatever it is on the top, the finish is, is like as hard as diamonds. You can't scratch this. All of this we've had lying around, gets chucked, it gets knocked around. Not one blemish on any piece. It really, really is tough. The most durable finish you will get on a tool ever. But there we go. There it is. It's a 600 square. Um, I'm not reviewing any of this today, obviously, but I'm just giving you my opinion and why I think they're great. It's the value for money. It's the quality. It's the finish. And the job they do for you just makes your life so much easier because, after all, you want to do things quicker and more safely and um, with a bit of style also. But, um, yeah, that is it. That was the bonus tool. That's six altogether. I will leave links in the description for you. And if you feel like you've taken anything away from this video, feel free to become a member. It really does help um, because all of this does take time out of my day. And it's a free video, just like all of them on YouTube. And um, yeah, it'd be great to um, have you as part of the team. A membership start from $1.99. So head over there and it's really, really quick and simple. Just click on the membership link. Cheers, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you next Friday. Take it easy. Ciao for now.